so the capacity to learn is a gift the ability to learn is a skill and the willingness to learn is a choice good afternoon everyone this is rupal mishra on behalf of pro mfg media and our partner team viewer it's my pleasure to welcome you all on today's pro mfg masterclass which is focused on industrial ar and ai to digitize manufacturing operation and processes it help our audience to gain actionable insight into improving productivity maintenance and servicing equipment effectively by adopting these technologies before we begin i would like to give a small brief about pro mfg media it's a knowledge based platform that helps people connect collaborate and transform the manufacturing sector by using the power of media our prime focus on learning from industry peers on people process technology safety and sustainability today we have two subject matter expert who will take this master class ahead and after the session we will have a q and a round for our audience our first stick speaker mr stefan bhomgar who is the director of product management in team viewer joining us from germany stefan works as a director and product manage management driving the growth of the enterprise ar solution platform team viewer frontline prior to this position stefan was product manager in uh, innovation responsible for innovation within the frontline solution platform from idea generation to successful new product launches with a focus on mixed reality and ai products stefan has over 5 year of experience in science and industry in ai ar and variable computing technology stefan holds masters and phd degree in physics from mens universities welcome mr stefan and thank you for joining us today Our next speaker Mr Kunal Patel is head of team viewer India and South Asia region business. He has 18 year of extensive experience in sales and business management. He has held key position in several renowned companies in technology and enterprise software industry such as SAP Gartner and Intelligence India Software Solution. Welcome. I would like to invite our speaker Kunal Patel to set the tone for the session. Over to you, Mr. Kunal. Thank you, Rupal, uh, and thank you, Pro MFG Media, for uh, setting up this uh, information session. And uh, 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 Stefan, thank you so much for taking time out uh, for this event. Uh, when we introduced augmented reality uh, solutions last year uh, to india market uh, there was a lot of interest around how augmented reality uh, can change the way people work uh, and uh, how it can help improve the productivity uh, with the new trends around consumer ar uh, consumer vr uh, metaverse and all all of that uh, customers are now evaluating those mega trends Uh, on industrial side as well i think the time could not be better than this where we thought that you know we will kind of put in an overall perspective how this technology is is shaping the industrial workforce and with that objective in mind uh, we we worked with pro mfg media to get uh, this uh, uh, event organized uh, thank you once again for everyone who has joined so far and who is joining and again i would like to welcome stefan to kind of teach us rather uh, explain us how uh, this new technologies around ar mixed reality all coupled with artificial intelligence is helping industries to improve productivity and efficiency so stefan uh, over to you yes thanks a lot thanks a lot for the kind introduction and and it's really a pleasure for me to to join this event and tell you something about how we can use technologies such as augmented reality and artificial intelligence and also the combination of both to optimize especially manual processes in manufacturing 
So I will talk about augmented intelligence for the frontline workforce. I will tell you about the big technology trends that we are seeing in the world around us in consumer industries, but of course, especially in, in industry and even more so in manufacturing. And I will explain more on this in my talk about AI and AR and how this goes together. The pandemic has shown that the way we work and the world around us is fundamentally changing. And if we are looking into society and the world around us, also in technology, there are various trends that we are seeing across the globe, basically. And a few of them are super relevant in the context of our session here today. And I would like to guide you through them step by step. The first one is a technology trend. So the systems and tools, and, and you know this from, from your operations, from manufacturing sites, assembly processes, are really becoming much more digital. They are becoming much smarter, much more sensors included, much more data. But what that also means is that these systems are becoming much more complex. So in order, for example, for a worker to do an inspection process today or a complex assembly process, it is really key that these people are enabled in the best possible way to be connected to the systems that are present on the shop floor. The second trend we are seeing, and that's, of course, when, when we, we are talking about full automation, digitalization, is that humans are competing more and more with machines on certain specific tasks. However, we know that the strong artificial intelligence, which can basically solve problems across domains, is still far away. And no one basically knows whether it at all will at some point be there. So the human will be the core of industrial processes for, for some time, for sure. And it is really key to enable these people who are working on the shop floor in warehouses to perform their tasks in the best possible way and to unify the power of machines and humans for the best possible outcome. The third trend we see, and that's now a bit mixed between a tech trend and a trend in society. So computing is becoming ubiquitous and increasingly embedded in non-standard IT equipment. And that basically means when we are looking to, to a shop floor that more and more machines are completely equipped with, with sensors and we can use the power of the data that we generate to connect a truly connected shop floor. However, it is then key that also the people who work on the shop floor get access to the data because as said in the beginning, a manufacturing assembly or an inspection process is simply not possible anymore without being connected to the data and having the data available when you need them. The fourth trend and the fourth major trend here I would like to talk about and that we see all around us is that there is a growing gap um, of skills between aging people in the work environment who are super experienced in, in what they are doing and who simply have a, not, a lot of subject matter expert knowledge in, inside of their, um, inside of their do, everyday doing. And it is about capturing this knowledge for future generations of workers but not only for the future, also today, we would like to and we should scale this knowledge inside of organizations um, to the best possible extent. The last trend I would like to tell you about is that now the, um, the younger people in our workforce are more and more digital natives. So those are now people which actually are used to a digitalized work environment since they are born. And these people are entering now and also over the last years, the job market. And what that means is that these people have a certain 
expectation towards the work equipment they are working with. And they simply expect that the work environment is digitalized and contains the best possible digital tools to perform the work in the best possible way. If we look now very concretely to shop floors and to warehouses, what, we, what are we seeing? We are seeing, of course, on the one hand side, a trend towards more and more automation as well as digitalization. However, we know that the strong AI, a robot, for example, who can really solve problems end to end across a full process is far, far away and will most likely never be there. Artificial intelligence is super strong in solving very specific problems. However, for end-to-end -end problem solving, the human will stay an integral part of any industrial processes for some time, for sure. And why is that? That is because the human, both with the cognitive, but also with the motor skills, for example, in, in his hands, is here to stay since these skills are very special and it's very hard, if not impossible, to do certain parts of this with an artificial intelligence, at least at a reasonable cost. So the human is currently an integral part of any industrial process and will remain so for a long, long time. What are we seeing? when we are looking into digitalization spendings in enterprises. So on the last slide, I explained that the human is super important for any industrial processes. However, that is not at all what we are seeing when we are looking into how much do enterprises spend on equipping the workforce, the human workforce with digital work tools. In fact, 80% of the global workforce, so a gigantic amount of people, is working in desk class jobs. Those are people that we call frontline workers. However, they are simply not equipped with the wrong tools to do their job in the best possible way, since only 1% of the spendings in enterprises are, is actually targeted at these people and targeted at, um, at the frontline workers. In absolute numbers, these 80% correspond to 2.7 billion people all around the globe who are very often left behind when it comes to connecting them with the digital world in a surrounding which is more and more digitalized. So frontline workers are very often left behind. That's a trend that we are seeing um, when it comes to digitalization. The question is, how can that be solved? And in this, um, in this competition, you could say between artificial intelligence and human power, what is the best possible area to target at? And what is the best possible way that a human and an artificial intelligence actually coincide on the shop floor? And the answer to this question is really what we call augmented intelligence. And this concept describes that artificial intelligence is not there to replace a human. It is rather there to augment and enhance the performance of a human in a way that these people can perform their tasks in a much, much better way. And you can see a very concrete example of a human and an artificial intelligence working jointly in a process on this slide. And this problem that is solved here is about worker safety. I will tell you more about other problems and benefits that we can achieve. But for now, let's stay with this example. So this frontline worker needs to perform a process where safety equipment in the form of safety gloves is key and actually required by legal um, by legal requirements. What the AI can do is to help this human to perform the task in a much safer way. And how this works is that first of all, this human is equipped with a smart glass where step-by-step -step instructions guide this human through the whole process. 
And then at a certain point that human is asked to actually verify that he wears the safety gloves, which are just key for a safe work environment in this area. And the way this works now is that this smart glass with a camera basically verifies by holding the hands in front of the camera of the smart glass that the right tools are actually worn to perform this process in the safest possible way. And in this way, by combining the power of the right hardware in the form of smart glasses with the right software in the form of step-by-step -step instructions and AI, artificial intelligence on top, we connect these humans and these frontline workers to the industrial metaverse. The industrial metaverse as a concept goes far beyond the standard definition of a metaverse, which is a fully digital space where representations of humans in the form of avatars and machines in the form, for example, of digital twins are coinciding to reality. Since in industry, what we are doing in industry, we are producing actual physical products. We are working on actual physical machines. So the industrial metaverse, to really leverage it in its full power, it's really key to connect the reality and the digital space that is part of the metaverse as well in the best possible way. And this can be achieved by key technologies in this context, namely augmented reality and artificial intelligence, which serve as key enablers in this context. With augmented reality, it is possible to get access, as I just explained on this last slide, to the digital contents, the sensor data, documentation, um, some, some kind of IoT data, and to bring this to the right point in space in reality for a human to have it available where it's just needed. You can think of a very concrete example, step-by-step -step instructions which are locally um, located where the instruction is needed on a machine, a certain kind of documentation which just opens up when you click in the right point in space and then you have the digital information available right next to your machine. But you can also think about this in the other direction. So capturing the knowledge of an expert, for example, by simply recording and enabling him to capture his knowledge in the live process with interactions with his hands and on the real world machine that he is just working on. Artificial intelligence on the other side serves as a key enabler on the data that we have available as part of the digital representation in the metaverse. So what we can do with AI is we can verify whether certain processes were done in the right possible way. We can do predictive analytics and maintenance tasks where people actually are asked to do a certain maintenance when a machine is about to break. And in this way, we, um, we make sure that the downtimes are reduced in the best possible way. Augmented intelligence. On this slide, I will guide you through the key benefits from what I was just explaining, what is possible in the context of the metaverse, and with the technologies AI and AR. First and foremost, we can optimize processes in various different areas. In the dimension of speed, we can make processes faster. So imagine a worker who needs the hands free to perform the task in the best possible way. By equipping this worker with a smart glass, the speed is usually increased, and I have some examples later on, significantly as part of this process. We can also make processes much safer. And I was giving a very concrete example of this just when I explained augmented intelligence. We can warn people 
we can automatically detect warning signs in work environments and give guidance to the people working there to be careful to actually wear the safety equipment. And finally, we can also make sure that manual processes are done with less and less errors. How is that going to work? Imagine the AI automatically detects based on the camera stream of the smart glass, whether a certain product was assembled in the right way or whether a certain process was done in the right way. So this is one of the core benefits of augmented intelligence and how we create a world that works better for the frontline workers. The second benefit is around capturing the knowledge of experts. So we are seeing that the demand is rising in terms of specialization. So new people who start into a new job need more and more skills to be able to do their tasks in a more and more complex environment. And in order not to overrun with onboarding times, training times, it is key to capture the knowledge of experts or people who are working in the process now and make it available for the follow-up generations of workers to work in this process. And that can be done by the combination of AR and AI. The third benefit is around transparency. So once we are bringing frontline workers with digital equipment into the fully connected shop floor or warehouse, then we do not only see the data of machines around us and can see when something is going on or wrong, we can also see what frontline workers are doing in their, in their manual processes. And when we can see when certain parts of a process are simply inefficient. For example, when, when too many steps are needed to perform a certain, uh, certain work instruction. Without a digital smart glass, for example, or a digital tool, the right software and AI on top, this is simply not possible. And this is then kind of a black box. And this black box doesn't allow for process optimization because we are not seeing what is currently going on. And then the final benefit of AI and modern work equipment is that the new generation of workers entering the, the, the shop floor industrial applications, they are simply expecting a work environment which also contains modern and digital work equipment. Since younger people are more and more used and they take it for granted that the world around us is digital, since that is basically what they know from their private life since they were born. These benefits I was just describing on a higher level translate into tangible business cases across industries. And in order to illustrate this, I want to show you a few examples from, from industry cases actually across the entire value chain, starting from supply chain processes, where, for example, at, at DHL or DHL supply chain, better performance can be achieved in translating into a higher productivity of around 15% in the, this case. In many cases, it's also 20%, sometimes 10%, but it's a significant increase in productivity that we are seeing in warehouse operations. <clears throat> and this benefit comes about since the workers in that case get their hands free. So they really, with a smart glass, have their hands free in order to perform their tasks in the best possible way. And this is done um, then much faster, basically resulting in a higher productivity. Another example from Coca-Cola, Hellenic Bottling, that is doing, they are doing warehouse operations in, um, in, in Europe over here. And what they were seeing and, and pain points they had before they implemented an augmented intelligence and AR solution is simply that they did too many errors. 
so the processes were um, were prone to errors. These errors caused an immense amount of follow-up costs. And with a smart glass-based solution, where the where verification steps are deeply integrated into the process, Coca-Cola HBC achieved an accuracy of the magnificent 99.99 that you can see on this slide. Now we are moving towards manufacturing at Airbus. I will talk a bit more about that, um, that case later on in the presentation. But there the pain point was that basically the processes were not fast enough. So they were really looking for a solution in order to increase significantly the speed of their operations. And the time and that was reduced for the inspections in, in the environment that they have um, is 40% down now. And that is basically the main benefit that the interaction with the IT system on a smart glass, on a wearable, really is worker-centric. So the worker doesn't need to go anywhere to do a verification or to get the work instructions. The work instruction is simply there all the time. And by this, um, they saved a lot of moving and walking inside um, the, the operations environment and therefore gained a huge amount of um, speed increase. Happier employees, that relates now back to the point where I was saying that nowadays people expect a digital work environment. It relates to the point that the employees in this case felt much, much safer with the um, with the digital work instructions on a smart glass. And it relates also to the point that processes are becoming more and more ergonomic. Since very often, we are still seeing paper-based solutions in, in, in warehouse operations on, on shop floors. And this is, of course, quite tedious to be forced all the time to interact with paper, to write things down, to read a document. And simply by digitalizing the work environment, the people, the employees at AGCO, which is, um, they are doing agricultural, so they are manufacturing agricultural machines, was increased significantly. After this more general overview, I want to share now very specifically towards manufacturing what we are hearing from from talking to to manufacturing businesses um, what are current trends in this area and what are possible solutions um, to to achieve and and to target the problems and pain points that that these businesses have and to summarize it in a very short way is basically that the manufacturing and process control market is expected to grow by a significant bit over the next um, four to five years. But that also translates to an insane amount of pressure. And that's the feedback we, we get from the market um, that, that this market is basically um, basically facing in, in their everyday operations. The main points that we hear are around mass customization. So while it is expected on the, um, on the one side that products are manufactured, assembled much faster and much quicker, it is also expected from the customers that basically these products are still more and more individual. It's about fast delivery. So there's an enormous um, pressure on, on delivering um, the, the pro products in a much faster way. And, and then it doesn't stop because customers nowadays do not only expect a super fast delivery in a global environment, but also what they expect is that after they get um, delivered um, the products, the machines, for example, and that the service in the after sales areas is just with, with, with quick response time and organized um, all around the globe in many, many cases. Highly competitive pricing in a global environment, that's of course also a big, um, a big pressure 
when when we are talking about global competition then also the price points are um and the prices are basically dictated by a global market which is just much more challenging the question how to scale production and how to re manage um, resources became key when we saw in the when we saw the pandemic right with a digitalized um, process it is much much easier to scale the production um, than than in a non digitalized in environment and another um, point just to to name the last one on this slide that that is usually part of our discussions it's around software integration so the challenge is usually um, not to have too many siloed software solutions inside one enterprise but to have really an end-to-end -end solution with 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 as little additional overhead as possible to be successful to make this very concretely so we are regularly talking, of course, to, to both the management, but also it is very close to our heart that we are always in close contact also to the people actually using, um, using augmented reality solutions. And the pain points, these and the pressure, these two groups are um, usually telling us are around on the management level more costly returns. So things, um, things need to be reworked it's about additional stuffing both in in the production environment but also on at the at the end of the production when it comes to qa and then of course it's about that processes are too slow too inefficient to address the challenges that i was mentioning on this last slide from the workforce we most of the times here that um, it is very challenging for them since since tasks are changing this goes back now a bit also to the more and more individualizing products that qa becomes much more complex because the products are also becoming much more complex and then very important that very often we hear that there are media breaks so within a certain process there are different solutions for different parts of the pro pr process and that is just super challenging for these people that they need to work with different solutions um, throughout their everyday work and that of course relates also to the last point that you see here silo digitalization efforts and not an end-to-end -end digitalization is also a challenge that we hear from the people working in these environments after having explained um, our view and what we hear from the market and feedback when we're talking to businesses about the challenges, the question is where do these um, businesses see the chances for solving these issues? And the answer to this question is that throughout basically to, to most of the businesses we are talking to, they are seeing the solution to all these challenges in, in innovations. And on this slide, you can see um, this um, brought a bit to, to one level deeper. So what are the reasons basically companies um, invest in innovations? It's about streamlining the processes with visual guidance and remote support in order to mainly drive productivity. And the other main dimension is basically around reducing costs, both on the, on the, in the area of how much do we need to invest to achieve a certain outcome, for example, a repair and an, a needed travel to do this, and on the other side, on the products as well. So higher product quality um, results in, in less reworks, and, and this is then reducing the costs and that is what what these businesses are um, expecting from from innovating their processes their operations having guided you now through um, the challenges business are seeing and and that and that basically innovation is what they expect from um, for, as a solution 
I would like to guide you through um, an, a possible option to, to, to resolve all, all these issues and, and where, where businesses are seeing and, and expecting the, um, the solution. Enterprise AR software is the solution to the pain points that I was just, just explaining. And before I go through the detail, you can see the, the great benefit really already on the picture. So this worker here needs to really use his hands to do his everyday work, to do his everyday operations. And by equipping him with a smart glass, we achieve hands-free information, but also the option via modern interaction methods such as speed to put in information in, into the backend system. Since the software that is running on this device is connected to the backend system of, um, of this customer. So it's about transferring knowledge easier. So knowledge, but also SOPs and processes. It's about fully connecting the frontline workers and make them as flexible as possible because the digital work instructions can adjust to changes in a much quicker way. Errors are reduced significantly because the worker is really asked by the smart glass, did you do this process step in the right way? And then he needs to confirm it. And that increases in addition to AI-based automated verification, the quality quite significantly. Better ergonomics, the, the benchmark solution are usually paper-based. So that is then reduced and not necessary anymore. And in end-to-end in -end digitalization, including the frontline worker, the business is just much more resilient to, to changes since the digital process can be changed quicker compared to a non-digital non process. And after this overview, I would like to guide you through a few of the technologies that we are seeing and then show you how they are in action at um, in, in certain customer stories. So the technologies on more on the hardware side range all the way from fully mixed reality smart glasses. So that is something where you can use your hands. You have a 3D model and you can manipulate with your hands. So with a super modern and innovative way of um, interacting with digital contents um, and you can change the 3D model. Assisted reality smart glasses, that is where you basically have the information in front of your eye and cannot interact with it, but sometimes it is not needed. And therefore, these devices provide a huge value, for example, in step-by-step um, -step instructions, logistics, but also manufacturing and after sales and service area. And then um, there are many use cases which are tailored for mobile devices. And when choosing a solution, it is super important to go for a solution that basically um, works across these devices because there are different devices targeted at different use cases. I would like to go guide you now through some real world examples how customers use these solutions to provide value in their everyday operations. The first example is from Airbus. I was already explaining this. It's, it's about a faster inspection process at Airbus helicopters. They are also having an integration into an SAP backend system where all the information is written and, and all the information is pushed and make, made available for the frontline worker. It's fully paperless. Before that, there was a lot of paper inside of this process and the faster inspection by 40% it's just an insane improvement. The second example, sorry, one, one too far. The second example is Audi, so automotive. Audi is using really 3D mixed reality for training purposes. So this worker is being trained on an end of line QA process and the step-by-step -step instructions, he really sees live on the, on the, um, on the car where it is needed. So for example, if he needs to inspect the wheel, then he really sees the information on, on the corresponding wheel. And in this case, um, the training costs could be reduced significantly. The next example, so AGCO 
is doing um, is manufacturing agricultural machines. And they use augmented reality solutions for, um, for a certain part of the process around painting. And this resulted in 90% less rework because the things were done just right um, in, the first, um, in the first attempt. A railway customer uses fully 3D contents again for training to close the skill gap. So the workers who need to get onboarded on the new processes are doing this not with on the actual track because it's also super costly to, to, close, a, to close a railway track. They are doing it in a virtual environment and then they only go out and, and the German railway customer needs to close the rail um, way operations only for a very short period of time. And this results in enormous um, savings for their, for their trainings. That brings me to the end of my part of this, um, of this nice event here. I was telling you about augmented intelligence and how AI and AR and the combination of both in the context of the industrial metaverse are creating a world that works better for our frontline workforce. I was explaining you with real world examples, how processes become much more optimized, much faster, much safer, and much um, less prone to errors. How skill gaps can be closed with these modern technologies to capture the contents of experts. How full process transparency can be achieved by having the shop floor connected and digitalized in an end-to-end -end way. So machines, but also the humans. So we know what is going on on the shop floor. We see the data in our backend and we can really use that data to optimize our operations. And the final benefit um, is that basically younger and younger people are expecting more and more digital workplace since they are simply, since they are born used to a fully digitalized and modern work environment. With that, I would like to thank you. It, it was really a pleasure and I'm looking forward to your questions at the end of this event. With that being said, over to Kronal. Thank you, Stefan. And uh, 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 I would uh, take five more minutes. I am sure there are a lot of questions and a lot of interest in the chat. But I would take five minutes and briefly brief about uh, what we as a team we were are doing in India. And post that, I will hand it over to Rupal uh, to take on the questions and answers. And we can go deep dive in that. So quickly sharing my screen. So TeamViewer started in 2005 with a simple vision of delivering software which can enable people to help other people. And with that simple mission and vision, we started developing and we have been very, very successful with our remote control, remote access, remote uh, support solutions. Uh, 2018 was a year when we pivoted and we started our journey towards Industry 4.0 and we introduced our AR solution. 2020 and 2021 were defining years. We did a lot of acquisition around AR platform and that actually gave us a lot of uh, strength when it comes to product processes as well as technology. We work on a very, very simple mission. We want to work with each of our stakeholders, partners, customers, uh, employees, uh, uh, free users, uh, basically to benefit the society and make a world that works better. If you look at TeamViewer today, we have three major areas where we operate. One is the instant remote control solutions where, we, where you are known about our, us as a remote control software, remote support software. Then we work with uh, large enterprises onto their embedded systems and provide them a secure managed enterprise connectivity to support uh, different things outside uh, endpoints like IT endpoints and operational workflow optimization with our augmented reality solutions. 
so in and all as an enterprise right from your product development to your post sale support we are able to address a lot of digital transformation processes uh, with our various solutions and that can actually help you optimize an end to end digital transformation in uh, investment specifically whatever stefan presented can be achieved and it is all real we all have the solutions out of the box most of them which can be implemented now we are not kind of giving a futuristic vision where you know we are talking of something like a science fiction but this is all real team we were frontline make it happen whether it is two dimensional or three dimensional solutions starting with various use cases like remote support digital inspection warehouse management and smart manufacturing with our platform you are able to render all your workflows in two dimension in three dimension onto smart variables which is then in turn integrated with your back end system of records like sap or any other systems that you are using in the back end with with the platform you are able to create in a very simple way a uh, uh, smart workflows which can help guide your frontline workers to do their job more efficiently with a, with less errors here is one example of our 3d capability for your immediate reference so it's not that you know this is something which we will try and do an error but there are already a lot of customers who are in production stage have been successfully deploying this solution over the last 10 years and have been you know at a very very mature level so the the summary is that it's a very mature technology available in india right you can start using it from tomorrow we will be very very happy to connect with each one of you to understand your unique challenge and give you a very very customized solution which can fit your requirements we are a one stop solution whether it is hardware software or services and integrations with your back end systems it is not only we that we talk about our platform but there are also a lot of third party independent research and uh, advisory companies who who have acknowledged that our platform is one of the leading platform like this research here from abi research we are among the top two platforms when it comes to augmented reality solutions so please feel free to connect to me uh, i will connect you to the right team within the team viewer to take this ahead and have further discussions to explore together how mr ar solutions can impact your business processes and with that said i would request rupal to take over uh, so very nice presentation stefan thank you could you share an example of the use of industrial metaverse in remote service support or troubleshooting of industrial equipment basically the audience wants to know an example you mentioned about the industry metaverse yes so again it was a pleasure to to give the presentation there are multiple multiple different use cases and customer stories in the remote support side of things i would like to share with you one example from the automotive industry and then also a bottling example so the use case in in automotive is around two things it's around warranty cases basically so in a decentralized um in a decentralized setting where there are technicians working all across the country in the dealers and people bring in their cars with a warranty case or problems these technicians work then on these problems and once they are not able to solve the problem on their own they connect to a central team of experts who give remote guidance and remote support and in this way it is then not necessary that someone needs to travel to the site of of the car dealer where the actual repair is happening and they can assess across distances um what what parts what parts they need um to ship so that's an example from from the automotive industry and then food beverage bottling industry we have examples where basically the machines who are on the production line in in the beverage industry are maintained 
across distances. So there's someone working on site on the machine, and then they connect to, in the case of a problem, but also in, in the case of standard maintenance procedures, they connect to an expert who is then really a deep subject matter expert from the company who was building that machine and they solve it together. And that goes back to the trend basically that I was mentioning in the very beginning. So we, we have a global environment. So these companies sometimes, especially in, in Germany, they are not, not that big, but they have super specialized machine and they send it all across the globe. But these companies then have like 100, 200, 600 people working there. So for them, it's super hard to organize their global s support. And that's what they do with remote um, support solutions and smart glasses. Thank you so much, Stefan. Uh, we have a no. general question, either uh, Krunal or Stefan, any one of you can answer. It's quite an interesting one. Uh, how artificial intelligence can help in quality inspection? Can it detect the defect during the quality inspection? So it's about the use of artificial intelligence in the quality process. Thank you, Niranjan. Uh, I, I can take that one. So uh, sure. uh, what, what we have um, uh, got as a feedback from our customer and as a roadmap, what TeamViewer is working on is uh, deliver artificial intelligence capability in our augmented reality solutions, primarily around you know both these areas. One is object detection, and second is the feedback mechanism, which means that you know when you when you use your uh, Team Viewer frontline augmented reality software along with your smart wearable, you are able to identify what object are you going to inspect or going to support. Or not only that. Once it is identified, and if you are doing if you do, if you are doing something which is not as per the standard operating procedure, the system should also give you a feedback and correct you in the real time. So we are working on that. In fact, we have something called as an AI studio, which is the latest launch as a part of our product, which gives you the capability as a user, as a customer, to create your own artificial intelligence. Uh, 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 mechanism. So for example, image processing and image comparison and feedback along with workflow can be completely customized as per your business process. And you can start using artificial intelligence along with uh, image uh, processing, image uh, identification and artificial uh, augmented reality all together. I have one question uh, for you, Krunal. What can we do to reduce people's resistance towards a VR and AR? Yeah, it's a very, very, a very, very important uh, topic actually, uh, and we get it a lot, at least in this part of the world. Uh, so uh, one is what we have always seen. What is working is if we kind of want to introduce a new technology into the organization we will have to find out who are the early adopters within the employees and kind of make them our ambassadors to uh, to kind of uh, you know market this technology within the balanced set of users the second thing which has been very very effectively uh, experimented is to gamify the entire experience so if suppose we can use artificial intelligence along with augmented reality and create a kind of a gamification or a competition in warehouse management um, where we can you know compare how a warehouse operator a is uh, is in line with warehouse operator b and kind of a create a competition around it then it will uh, the adoption will increase third thing in case of virtual reality i can still see that because there is a limitation on the hardware and because you have to kind of have a very high closed uh, uh, bipolar glasses to be worn and that can be uh, you know at times ergonomically not very very good but in case of mixed reality and artificial uh, augmented reality which we support uh, you can have now glasses which can actually support you for eight hour shift and without any ergonomic problems so uh, uh, three things one is uh, identifying who really can be champions within second you gamifying the entire innovation project and third, using the right hardware for the right use case so that, you know, adoption can improve. 
okay another question i can see in the chat box how ai can help with productive maintenance yes Tiffan, anyone can, can take pick? one it's, it's about predictive maintenance yes yes sure so pre what predictive maintenance is about doing a maintenance procedure before something goes wrong right and this can be based on 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 the data that is inside of the machines and and there then basically how it works is that patterns are recognized and and the artificial intelligence can detect when a machine is about to break and what then and that's then the link to the augmented reality solution is then there is an inspection use case, an inspection case scheduled, and the frontline worker is asked with a smart glass to do the inspection while having at the same time access to the data, to the live data inside of the machine to already be able to, to see where the problem is occurring as part of, um, of the standard maintenance workflow. Okay. Another question. Just to, just to add on that, Rupal, uh, because we have this uh, integration with a lot of system of records, including SAP, uh, mm -hmm. all the all the you know all the asset information or the material information can also be pulled out from your asset master or your material master, so that you know it can help you. Uh, I mean, it can help the frontline worker to get the exact information right from your uh, system of records. Okay. And they would like to understand a little more about the use of AR and VR in the tire industry, particularly with regards to the manufacturing processes. Uh, Stefan, uh, can you take that one? You can take it. Yeah. Yes, sure. So, I mean, a manufacturing process in the tire industry is, is also heavily relying on, on hands-free, on, on working in a hands-free way. And by basically equipping frontline workers with smart glasses and taking the um, the processes, the procedures, the SOPs that are present, digitalizing them, then it's basically it this enables the frontline workers, which are part of of the processes in the tire industry, to perform their work in in a hands free way and therefore much much faster. Yeah, I think uh, Mercedes Formula One uses augmented reality, uh, team viewer augmented reality in every part of the motorsport, including changing the tires. So we are very, very closely working with uh, Mercedes uh, on various AR uh, use cases. Please send me an email directly if you find anything which you want to know, or you can go via the contacts from ProMFG. Uh, and we would be very, very keen to kind of address uh, your queries.